Hello everyone, today I'm going to talk about how to install Sitecore 9 with Syphilis, uh, which is basically stands for Sitecore Install Framework, but without having to go through the PowerShell steps that you would need to if you're using SIF. This is a kind of a more GUI interface to install Sitecore. Um, so the first thing you're going to need to do is kind of two things. You're first going to need to know and download the Sitecore um, 9 installation files you're going to need from Sitecore. I'm going to show that here in a second. But the first thing that you're really going to need is the download Sif, Syphilis, the tool. Um, I will note that if you search for Syphilis, uh, you might see, did you mean Syphilis? Or you may also end up with Syphilis uh, search results as well. Um, just be aware that uh, if you add Sitecore the end of this the search term, then it should show syphilis if you're seeing syphilis uh, instead. So I clicked on the first result, and this kind of explains what syphilis does and how it works. But what I was really after is just to download the latest version. So if I click this option, basically you're going to download the latest version onto your local machine. So if I go into uh, Show and Folder. I now see syphilis here. I'm going to want to install this to just my C Sitecore folder. I should already have that. Actually, let's install it in SIF. Actually, let's do it there. So, SIF, extract. Now we should see all the syphilis stuff in here, syphilis.exe. Uh, the next part is, like I said, I'm gonna need to download the Sitecore 9 files that I need. So there's different topologies that you get for Sitecore 9. You, you really should know what you're gonna kind of work on. Um, I would say the most common one that you're gonna have is an XPO or, it, or what they consider XP single, which is basically everything is all in one instance. So you're not gonna have your role split up uh, into different multiple website instances like you might have with the XP scaled or XM. So let's just focus on downloading it again because it, I guess it doesn't pass it through. Um, you click it and now it starts downloading. So in a few minutes, I will continue this on. And now it's done. So now it's downloaded that file. So I'm gonna go to show in folder and I'm going to just move this real quick, copy. Move this to C, SIF, and now you'll see I already have a Sitecore 9 here, um, but it's version 9.0.0. What I want to do is I want to paste in the new Sitecore 9.0.1, and I'm just going to extract it here. Uh, let's go ahead. I don't have 7-zip on here. It's weird. Yeah, so I will strip this out. And I will just create a new folder called Sitecore 9. I, I thought I was going to create a second folder for the name. So I will just move all these in there. And really this should be in there as well. And I will call this Sitecore 9 0.1. And then I'll move all these into there. And the next thing I want to do is I just want to unzip this. And I want to place this in a folder just called configuration. Extract. And that's got all my configuration in it. I'm going to delete this. I still need the original, I guess I don't necessarily need this, but these two I'm going to need the XPO uh, XConnect and then the single Sitecore web website. Um, so next next thing is really just kind of spinning up my SIF list uh, EXE. So if I double click on this. It's going to tell me that it's not safe to run it, but I can just tell it to run it anyways on a Windows 10 machine. 
And then you get this interface that just kind of shows you all the configuration that you're going to need to do to get this going. My license uh, XML, I can pull this from my, my old SIM folder. So if I go to Windows C and then I find my Sitecore folder, there should be a license file in here. I think I actually store it in a number of places as well. Configuration folder, this is where I just unzip that folder to. Um, so if I go to C, syphilis, down here, or sif, I mean, um, Sitecore 9, Sitecore 9.0.1, .0 and then this configuration folder. Click OK. And then the Sitecore package, which is your website package. If we go back to C, sif, 9, 9.0.1, and then we're going to pull this single SC w WDP file. That's the one that you want. And then you want your XConnect package, which is this one. Click open. And then you get to name your instance. Now you can call it whatever you want. Um, you can kind of follow a naming convention. You can call this XPO SC or, or whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to call this example. SC and an example to XConnect. So this is where you can access um, XConnect and things like that. Uh, next thing you're going to need to define is your solar instance. Now you must have already watched my my uh, video that where I showed how to install solar 6.6.2. 6.6.2 is prerequisite for Sitecore 9.0.1, which is what I'm installing in this tutorial. But if you're using a different version, obviously your your version may vary. But and it needs to be running SSL on this solar instance. If it's not running uh, SSL, you're going to have run into issues when you try to run XConnect because XConnect requires SSL. So HTTPS, and then I'm going to, it's going to be on localhost. This is what I did in my last video on how to install Sitecore uh, or how to install solar. And now I used a port number of 662 to represent the version of solar that I'm running. Uh, you could have used 8983, eight, I believe is the default solar port number. Um, and then I just will specify solar. And then you got to specify where that folder exists in your tree. So I can go into solar down here. And inside of that is solar 6.6.2. And then the solar service, I can't remember what it's called. Let's just go to services. And you can find it just by finding what you might have named it. I forgot what I called it, but it's it's a capital S and then solar 662. So solar 662. SQL Server, a little bit more complicated. Uh, so let's go into my SQL Server management tools or management studio. You need 2016 if you're going to be running a Sitecore 9 instance. Um, it looks like I'm using Windows Authentication and just dot, but I'm probably going to need, um, let's see what I got here. It's been a while since I run, ran this stuff. Um, so let's see if I can do this. Um, uh, dot or localhost. Let's just do localhost. Should represent the default instance on my machine. And then SA and then I believe that would be you can run test and it will test to see if all this stuff works. So it's showing that you know all this is is set up. SIF is installed, SIF fundamentals. Now if you go through this checklist and for some reason some of this stuff does not verify then you're going to need to make sure you're, you're going to need to make sure you install some of this stuff. So like SIF fundamental, SIF fundamentals installed in SIF, you can go out and download those from the web. Um, I'm not going to show how to do that necessarily, but you can just Google for those, download SIF, install it. SIF, fund, SIF fundamentals, you can also install that. Those are mostly PowerShell extensions. So if you have a, I forgot what it's called, but there's a tool for PowerShell where you can tell it to pull down these um, these kind of modules for for PowerShell, and then it will pull down SIF and it will pull down SIF fundamentals. So.
All right, so, or I believe that's the way I did it um, before. So now it's saying it's passed. So now I, I should be able to just go ahead. I want to do one last check because I didn't see it in the list. Is I just want to make sure that what I used as a connection string here works. So I will just say localhost. And then I will say SQL Server, SA. And then connect. Okay, yep, that works, and that should be a full connection. Let's go ahead and just run that. So there's kind of two options down here at the bottom. There's generate files, and then there's generate files only. Generate files is where it kind of creates uh, different things for your setup. Um, I don't usually use this option. I, I will probably show a demo in the future on how to do all this and what this all does. There's also in Cephalus the ability to uninstall your instances and it will create uh, the uninstall scripts for you. And I will show that in the future as well, how, hey, I just spun up my example SE. Maybe I want to delete that instance. I can show in a future tutorial how to do that with syphilis. So I'm going to actually uncheck uh, generate files only, and I'm going to use the generate files and install. So I'm going to click that option. And now it's going to generate some files behind the scenes, but then it's also going to go ahead and spin up a whole new Sitecore 9 uh, installation on my machine. Now, if this goes perfectly, then this should be this should run without any issues, and you won't see any red red messages or anything like that, and everything should be good. Uh, it, you might run into scenarios, especially if you're running on a Windows 8.1 machine, where you run it and it, it just bombs because um, there's issues with your certificates and things like that. But, oh, it looks like I got an issue. It says it couldn't find that solar instance. I'm pretty sure that's it. It's actually spun it up over here. I seem to get past that step by uh, upgrading my SIF uh, uh, installation files, my PowerShell module, as well as updating my SIF found fundamentals. So one thing to note on this machine is that I had uh, or previously had a version on here because I was installing it when Sitecore 9 first came out and now I'm installing a Sitecore 9.0.1 installation and obviously SIF as well as SIF fundamentals have been upgraded since then. Um, it looks like that what it did in the step where it was failing is that it, it for some reason would not connect on the first attempt but on subsequent attempts it would actually work. I'm not sure why that is it, but because it would check more than once it would say, oh, it couldn't connect, try again. And on the second attempt, it worked. So it looks like now it's going through all the steps. I mean, it, it's not done yet, so obviously it could fail at some point as well. But uh, I'll let you know when it's done. All right, so now we're done with the installation. It's basically run through the SIF installation. And now it's saying that we're done. And it's actually saying also some information about if we wanted to uninstall, which I'm gonna show in a future tutorial, um, there's a path here that I can actually uninstall uh, with the PowerShell script, the, the install I just did. So let's just prove that this is working. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to an example.sc site and, and prove that it's working. So I'll say, OK, close this. I'm actually just going to go ahead and close all the CIFLA stuff. And then I'll just go to HTTP example. Oh, example. Uh, SC slash. All right, so what I did, uh, for some reason, um, my Chrome is, is making me do HTTPS for some reason. Um, so I just, what I did was just use uh, Edge here to show that it's working. Um, and this is what you would expect to see. Um, I think it's something to do with the example.sc that I'm using. Whereas I, I've done a few other instances. I've, I spun up one called Sitecore.se. That one was working without me having to use Edge. So I'm, it's just something specific to my environment that's uh, causing this scenario. But So I'll log in real quick and just show you. You can tell it's a 9.0.1 installation because it's got EXM in it, by which you can tell by this email experience manager uh, setup. And uh, we have a fully functioning Sitecore 9 9.0.1 installation using syphilis or syphilis. Um, and 
uh, using Solar 6.6.2. All right, that's it. Good luck.